Hey everyone, my name is Brianna Haddon and I'm a board certified behavior analyst at the Easter Seals Delaware County Division. Today I'm going to go over social skills across all settings, so the home, the school, and in the community. So this is our agenda. Um, I'll provide a little background information on myself, ground rules, what is PBIS, and social skills across all settings. So a little bit about me. I graduated from Westchester University in Pennsylvania with my undergrad degree in speech language pathology. Then I went on to get my master's at George Mason University in special education and applied behavior analysis. And then I sat for my board exam and became a board certified behavior analyst. So what is PBIS? PBIS stands for Positive Behavior Intervention Support. So PBIS is implemented within our Easter Seals school community. So we also use PBIS built in to our program and we, we also utilize our pyramid model, which I'll review shortly. So what is PBIS in preschool? Program-wide expectations such as be safe, be kind, have fun, Common positive language, example, walking feet, quiet voice, hands to self, visual supports and schedules, a focus on social and emotional skills and development, professional development and support staff, family engagement, including training and group support, core leadership and coaching teams. So I'm just going to quickly review our pyramid model. So as you see here in the blue, this is our tier one support. This is our universal supports for all children. As you see in the blue, it says nurturing and responsive relationships. So for some examples are greeting the child when they come to school, giving five to one ratio, playing with what they enjoy, um, making it fun making them feel welcome. High quality supportive environments include visual schedules, visual supports, um, setting expectations. And then tier two is what we'll dive into more today and I will go over in more detail within this presentation. And then tier three intervention is more individualized and intensive. This is if a student has a one-on-one, -on -one, or a BSC on their IEP. So this is one of my favorite quotes by Tom Humer. If a child doesn't know how to read, we teach. If a child doesn't know how to swim, we teach. If a child doesn't know how to multiply, we teach. If a child doesn't know how to drive, we teach. If a child doesn't know how to behave, we teach, we punish. Well, the hope is that we teach, right? So we, this dives into what we're gonna get into during this presentation about, we wanna teach a replacement for challenging behavior. So why is it that we can't finish the last sentence as automatically as we do as others? That's a good thing to think about. So, like I said, social emotional skills can be taught to children as a replacement for challenging behavior. So we wanna teach a replacement. So we wanna tell them what to do instead, instead of what not to do. So examples include, instead of running, you can say walking feet. Another important thing is we wanna teach, we wanna identify teachable moments outside of challenging behavior. So this is a great visual to kind of look at that. You can see the red arrow is where it, the child is escalated. Maybe they are hitting or screaming or angry. 
we don't want to teach those supports during that time. We want to um, look for an opportunity when they're calm so that we can teach um, a replacement behavior. So teaching social skills. This is a good model that we need to think about always, especially when we're teaching a new skill. So an example for my turn, for teaching my turn, is we want to first model. So we can model my turn or sign my turn, the adult is showing them. Then the prompting is prompting them to do it. Um, Brianna, say my turn or do this, my turn, and modeling how to demonstrate the skill. And then we want to reinforce. I like how you said my turn and give the child a turn. So reinforcement is a way to increase the likelihood that they will engage in that behavior again in the future. Other ways to reinforce are providing an activity or an item that they enjoy. Okay, so I'm gonna talk about some strategies for teaching social emotional skills in all settings. So one thing that we want to teach first is identifying feelings in the child and others. Emotional literacy is the ability to identify, understand, and express emotions in a healthy way. So one way that we need to teach is indirectly. So we teach social emotional supports indirectly and directly. So I'm going to talk a little bit about what are the strategies to teach um, social emotional supports indirectly? So first, we, pro we provide emotional labels as children experience various states. So I see that you're angry, I'm very sorry, or you and your sister look really happy playing together. Or within the classroom, oh, I like how you and Brianna are so happy playing together. Another great way to indirectly teach social and emotional supports is adults can label their own emotions. So saying, I'm so tired today, or I didn't get enough sleep, I'm very tired. I'm happy today. And also using photos and various emotions and feelings chart. So as you see this picture, there's a mirror next to the feelings chart. This is a great way to indirectly teach labeling emotions. Um, you know, you can be silly with it as the child, you know, looks at themselves in the mirror. You can make funny faces or label their emotions in the mirror if they're smiling or if they're not happy. Um, th that's a great way to indirectly teach. Okay, so now we're going to get into how do we directly teach the social emotional skills. So Examples include songs and games, feeling check-ins at circle time or during morning and bedtime routine, books about feeling sad um, should be available on the bookshelf, reading area, within the child's room, um, maybe next to their bed or in their play area. Um, visuals such as a feelings chart, and social stories that you can incorporate into um, your lessons or incorporate into your daily um, life at home. Okay, so here are some great examples of some wonderful stories um, on, on teaching emotional literacy. So um, on Monday when it rained, glad monster, sad monster, and hands are not for hitting. And then this is a great feeling chart that you can use at home, um, in the community, or at school. And you know, it says, how are you feeling today? And then it has the different emotions. So strategies for teaching social and emotional skills in all settings also includes strategies for teaching friendship skills. So ways to teach this is turn-taking, adult modeling and prompting. Like I reviewed before, we want to model, prompt, and reinforce. 
um, songs, incidental teaching, which can be done in the natural environment. So when things are naturally occurring. So stay up here once another, once a turn with something that they're playing with. That can be a good teachable moment of how to be a good friend. Or say a, you know, say a sibling dropped their dropped their food. You can teach the sibling, oh, it's okay. She dropped her food. Let's pick it up and be a, be a good, be a good brother or be a good friend. Um, and then we want to encourage them. We want to use lots of enthusiasm and praise. Um, and then we can use games and songs. Also social stories, um, like I said before, are really great for teaching skills, um, especially about friendship and sharing. A great story um, that you can read is, I can be a super friend. So super friend is about taking turns, sharing and being a great friend. So another strategy that, another thing that we want to teach within social emotional skills is controlling their anger and impulses. So we taught them how to recognize their feelings with all the strategies as I listed before. And now we want to teach them how to control their anger and impulse. So you can see here, this visual is the turtle talker method. So it says here, recognize that you feel angry. So that's step one. So that's all the strategies we talked about, emotional literacy and recognizing their feelings and labeling their feelings, identifying their feelings. Then the next step is think and stop. So that needs to be taught also. We can teach that through stop and go games, red light, green light, and then we go into our coping and calming strategies. Um, so step three is go into your shell, take three deep breaths and think and calm and take a breath. So you can model that, right? So let's take five deep breaths. One, two, three, four, five. And then the fourth step is come out of your shell and calm and think of a solution, which we'll get into how do we teach children to problem solve. There's also turtle talker, take time, take, um, time to think and tuck at home. And then there's one that you can use at school. So you can, and also the turtle talker steps are included in both of the social stories. So they can be read at home, and you can talk about the, the techniques and practice them with your child. Okay, so then that last step of the um, turtle tucker technique was teaching problem solving skills and teaching problem solutions. So a great way to do this is also through visual, social stories, modeling, prompting, reinforcing, and the solution kit is a great way to use that. So within the classroom, you know, say a peer wanted another toy that a different peer was playing with and they tried to grab it or they're screaming or they're crying. We want to find a teachable moment that, and you can prompt them, oh, you're saying you want to turn. Okay, what do we do now? We can get a timer or we can ask nicely for the toy. So that's a great way to incorporate that. And also there are, there is a solution kit for the home, which is embedded in the social story, which is great because you can read the social story about how to use those problem solving steps. Okay, and then these are just other examples of the solution kit. So you can post this in your, in your playroom or in the child's bedroom. You can post this in your classroom. So you can see here, this is um, a solution board where you can post the pictures or you can print out this. And also, or you can have a bin with this, the large solution kit cards at home and in the classroom. 
So social skills in the community. So we talked a lot about um, the different strategies for teaching social emotional support. All of that can be utilized in the community as well. So some things that we can do are pre-teach. So letting them know what to expect, talking about what you're doing, where you're going, right? So say you're going to the grocery store, you can say, okay, mommy is going to the grocery store. We're gonna get out of the car. I'm gonna get a cart. I'm gonna walk down the aisle. I'm gonna buy a few things. And then we're gonna check out. And then we're gonna get in the car and go home. We're just talking about what's happening next or if there's something new happening, talk about it with your child. Um, and then also we, we wanna teach them personal space and stranger danger. Um, and that can be taught in all the ways that I mentioned before. But there's, there are some great social stories such as um, Personal Space Camp, which is one of my favorites. It talks about a boy who has trouble keeping personal space. Um, that's a great one to read to your children. And then here, this is just a simple um, printout about personal space. So it says, um, giving my friend a good space. So you can see the arrow there. They have personal space. They're in their personal space bubble. And then you can see the picture here. It says too close. And then it says friends feel happy when we are when we are at a good space. Okay, so now I'm gonna get into how to create a social story and why they're good for teaching new things and new situations. So social stories are meant to help children understand social situations, expectations, social cues, new activities, and social rules. They are brief description story brief descriptive stories that provide an accurate information regarding social, a social situation. So this can help children know what to expect. And knowing what to expect can help with um, challenging behavior and help them act appropriately within the social setting. So parents, teachers, and caregivers can use these simple story, stories as a tool to prepare their child for a new situation to address the problem, or even to teach new skills in conjunction with reinforcing responses. Okay, so there are three types of sentences um, to make a social story. The first one is a descriptive sentence that provides information about what is specifically occurring in the social setting or the situation. So give cues on what the person sees, who is involved, and what happens. So a school example is at preschool, we have to line up to go places. We line up to go to the gym, to the lobby, and to go outside. And then for a doctor's office example is at the doctor's office, we have to wait in the lobby until it's our turn to go into the room So our next type of sentence that we want to use in a social story is a perspective sentence. So it describes the internal states of other people. These type of sentences provide information on thoughts, feelings, and the mood of other people, describing that internal stuff and how someone else is feeling and how they might feel can help children. And a lot, a lot of those things children might not know about. They don't know how you're feeling. So it's good to express that um, in the social story so that they are able to have that theory of mind. So a school setting is sometimes my friends and I get excited when we line up because we're doing some, we're going someplace fun like outside. So that's a great perspective sentence explaining the thoughts and excitement of the student and the friends. So example for a doctor's office is sometimes I get scared because it's loud and the lights are bright in the doctor's office. So this is another perspective sentence. So you're describing the thoughts and feelings of the student. You can also include, you know, mommy 
it's really sad when you scream at the doctor's office. I know it's scary because the lights are bright, but we can do this. And that will get us into our next type of sentence, which is a directive sentence. So we're providing information about the what the child can do, what the, you know, it also can be a replacement behavior. So something that they can engage in instead of the challenging behavior or something they can do to be successful in that situation. So for example, in school, it's okay to get excited, but it's important to try to walk in the line. At the doctor's office, it's okay to be scared, but mom will stay close by. I can take deep breaths and calm down. Okay, so here's another example of a social story about a new baby. So you can see here it says, you have a new baby in your family. There will be a lot of changes with the new baby. This is what happens when there's a new baby in your family. So that's a descriptive sentence of it. That's explaining what's happening in the situation. And then there might be more people in your house. They will be coming to see the new baby. When the baby is crying, you might be angry. So that's a perspective sentence describing the feelings and thoughts of the child. Cover your ears, take a deep breath, and use your words. Ask for a hug. Dad will need to help the baby a lot. Sometimes you will need to play by yourself. So that's a, that is another directive sentence. That's our third type of sentence. It's explaining what is gonna happen. So what's gonna happen in the situation is that dad, you know, it might be busy and the child might have to play by himself sometimes. The new baby is gonna learn a lot from watching you. The baby will be happy and love you very much. So that's another directive sentence. Okay, so I mentioned on um, different types of social stories that you can create, but here are some um, different situations in that you where you might want to create a social story. Um, grocery shopping, going to the dentist, new baby coming, which I already talked about, and getting a haircut. So that all those um, sentences are great because you can use them and create your own social story for different circumstances with, within your house. Okay, so patience is a learned lesson. And you got this for all those teachers, therapists and parents out there, you got this, you can do it and you're awesome. Thank you. Thanks for listening.